my talk is going to be about uh, mesenchymal or mesenchymal stem cells. And uh, I'm just going to use the term MSC. And this is a picture of MSC. So uh, I'm going to use that term, and uh, I'll go ahead and get started. So it's the name of my talk. <clears throat> so I'll give you a little background on Panama. Uh, Metastem Panama, the laboratory was founded in the City of Knowledge, which is a, a prestigious uh, technology park in Panama. It's actually the former U.S. Southern Command and Control for the U.S. Army uh, at the Panama Canal. And uh, the Stem Cell Institute is in the city of Panama, Panama City. And uh, all of our technology, the original technology came out of a, we were doing cancer vaccine work. We've treated more than 1,800 patients. Today we treat to see about 30 to 40 patients a month. We have five doctors on staff, and uh, Dr. Jorge Paz Rodriguez will be speaking later today as our medical director. And he actually practiced, he trained in New York and practiced in San Antonio for a number of years before he moved back to Panama. So these are the cell sources that are used at the Stem Cell Institute. The patient's own bone marrow, the patient's own fat tissue, uh, which is digested, and uh, uh, the cells, the non-fat cells are used. And also umbilical cord MSCs from donated uh, live healthy births. I've been to Panama City lately, uh, it's changed a lot. So uh, we have, uh, now there, uh, we have a Waldorf Astoria, we have a, a Waldorf, we have a, a Trump Tower, we have a, a big new Hilton, uh, we have a Hard, Rock a Hard Rock Hotel. So it's uh, growing leaps and bounds in the last 10 years or so. This is a picture of the Stem Cell Clinic, Stem Cell Institute. One of the things that uh, differentiates, I, thi I think, is that uh, we collaborate with several universities. We work with the University of San Diego, Indiana University, uh, with Boris Menev at the University of San Diego, Indiana U University. We work with Keith March, who's the director of regenerative medicine there. Uh, University of Utah, we work with Amit Patel there, who's probably done more clinical trials with uh, adult stem cells than any other doctor. Uh, University of Western Ontario, uh, Wei Ping Min. Uh, we have uh, published 23 papers in the stem cell realm, and uh, the company, the parent company, has a patent portfolio of 19 patents. So I'll just show you a couple images of our laboratory. We're very proud of our laboratory. Most people, when they go there, can't believe that this is sitting right next to primary rainforest, which is where it is. This, uh, the canal zone was cut out of primary rainforest. And we have three uh, class 10,000 clean rooms, which are, um, <clears throat> they're, they're uh, GTP and GMP, those are good tissue practices and good uh, manufacturing processes uh, compliant. And this is a picture of one of the clean rooms, and you can see their hoods. Those are all class 100 hoods, which are sterile hoods, and the incubators are also class 100 sterile, sterile incubators. It's just an image of some people working. And we have flow cytometry, so the cells that we use are all fully characterized. Uh, we know what we're putting into people. <coughs> so one of the, the laboratory manager. So a lot of people ask me, why are we in Panama? Well, when we looked at for a place to uh, treat people using their own stem cells and umbilical cord stem cells. Uh, I, I actually met with Dr. Paz and another partner there, uh, Rodolfo Fernandez, who owns a, a series of laboratories there. And uh, we checked with the attorneys and they found a law on the books in 2004, which basically said that a doctor can treat patients with adult stem cells under the practice of medicine. So that's the main, well, Besides having wonderful partners and being in a great city uh, uh, in a vibrant economy uh, with plenty of flights, uh, this law was a big reason for us going there. Um, a new law was passed in February which defines the laboratory licensing and uh, it's, you know, it adheres to international standards. It defines the qualifications of the principles and then it requires a IRB or Institutional Review Board of all uh, treatments. And so we're in the process of all that. Uh, uh, some of our protocols have been approved and uh, the, the rest are going through IRB approval. Uh, and also specif specifies certain investment in the country in order to get the license. So, Anyway, so here's a summary of what I'm going to talk about regarding MSCs, uh, mesenchymal stem cells. Um, I'm going to talk about their ability to home. Uh, I'm going to talk first about where they're found in the body. and. Uh, talk about their ability to home to inflamed tissue. I'm going to talk about how they induce repair, how they modulate the immune system. 
I'm going to talk a little bit about young versus old MSCs, and then I'm going to talk about safety issues of using MSCs both from uh, autologous, from yourself, and from donated umbilical cords. So there are two major categories of stem cells. There's the CD34, or uh, basically the bone, uh, the uh, your blood forming uh, stem cell, which are found in your bone marrow. And uh, this is a, a lot of times people uh, think of bone marrow transplant when they think of stem cells. And that's something that's done usually in, in cancer patients when there's a, uh, when you're trying to kill all the tumor cells, you give a large dose of chemotherapy and or radiation to do that and it wipes out the bone marrow in the process. So you need to replace that bone marrow with these uh, precursor cells, these stem cells which can repopulate the bone marrow and, and create a blood forming system again. And that's not what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about this other major category of stem cells, the MSC, me mesenchymal stem cells. So they're also found in the bone marrow. And one of their primary jobs in the bone marrow is to nourish the other, the other stem cells to uh, produce uh, basically your blood products, your white blood cells, your red blood cells, platelets, et cetera. And they're found throughout your body in, in all of the vascular tissues because they're actually called pericytes, meaning around. They, they go around all the blood vessels in your body. So they're in every vascular tissue in your body, including the fat. Uh, they're also found in postnatal tissues like the umbilical cord, in the, in the tissue of the umbilical cord, the tissue of the placenta. They're found in menstrual blood. We actually discovered MSCs in the menstrual blood in 2007, and uh, we won the Medical Article of the Year Award uh, for that publication. Um, they're also found in teeth in the dental pulp, so if you have a tooth pulled out, the, the, get the pulp out and isolate these stem cells also. So our source of MSCs is from live healthy births. The mother is screened for her medical history. Uh, there's a consent from the family for the donation. The mother's tested for infectious disease and the cord is tested also for infectious disease and sterility before it's ever used. Uh, just a note on that, uh, we use about one out of ten cords that we get because either they don't have enough MSCs in them to be worth the cost of, of processing or if there's any, uh, any even uh, cytomegalovirus, which is rather innocuous, we, we don't use any of those cords. So um, anyway, this is a picture of uh, MSCs, the sort of the red pink, I guess, in this picture. Uh, this is a capillary, little tiny blood vessel in your body. And this, these uh, cells wrapping around the, the capillary are MSCs. So they're, they're also referred to as pericytes because they're around, uh, around the vasculature. So where is your vasculature? This is, this is an image from the, the, the body exhibit where they actually dissolved, dissolved the rest of the person and left the vasculature. So um, anyway, that, it shows you can actually see the anatomy there because vasculature is everywhere. Uh, so this is from uh, Arnie Kaplan. Ar Dr. Arnold Kaplan is the first person to ever describe the mesenchymal stem cell, and we're lucky enough to have him coming to Panama next week to talk to uh, a group of physicians along with uh, some other speakers. Anyway, uh, this is a slide. There won't be a test on it, but um, this is how, uh, this basically, you can see that the, the MSCs, uh, the, these parasites, they can reside in the bone marrow to support the uh, the blood forming cells, they can, uh, they can also differentiate into bone, cartilage, tendon, muscle, and fat. So these are the natural lineages of, of these MSC cells when they, when they differentiate. And uh, Dr. Kaplan has an interesting uh, sort of view of the MSC, he calls them an injury drugstore. So they're found everywhere in your body and their job is to, uh, maintain the status quo in your body. So if something's disrupted in the status quo, then they are th they're the first line of defense to rectify it. And so um, here is, uh, this is from an article that he wrote a couple years ago, and it shows the pericyte, and then you have an injury occur, and then it, the pericyte is basically converted to an MSC. We're not so sure that it needs much of a conversion, it just needs to come off. Then it's, it becomes activated, then it becomes a medicinal MSC. So it responds to the environment in which it's found by secreting certain trophic factors, and I'll get to that on the next slide. 
So these are, this is all the things that the MSC does. Uh, it's anti-apoptotic, which means that it prevents cell death. So a lot of times an injury, uh, when you have a lot of oxidative injury or uh, an, a big insult to the cell, the cells will undergo, undergo programmed cell death. And, and some, sometimes they lose their mitochondria, which is their, their energy source, and MSCs will actually donate their mitochondria to the injured cell. Um, they're anti-scarring. They're, they can be angiogenic, meaning that they can induce new blood vessels to grow. So if you've cut something significantly or broken something, you need new blood vessels to go in there to, to supply it with nutrients. So it's an important aspect of what they do. They're mitotic or they can stimulate mitosis or cell division of cells that are just hanging around not doing much. So that's on the trophic side of things, but they also can modulate the immune system, the white blood cells, particularly in overactive white blood cells. They, they're able to modulate that, and these are the different cells that they affect, the T cells, B cells, dendritic cells, and T regulatory cells. So I talked earlier about homing, and here's an interesting study. Mark Penn, he, he uh, took uh, green fluorescent protein, basically the cells are programmed to fluoresce, and then he injected them into rats and the rat on the left was just injected with the cells but was not injured. And you can see there's a, there's a, few, there's a few lights there. Then the, the one on the right had a sternotomy, so the chest was opened up as if it was going to have open heart surgery, and then it was just closed. And they were given these cells intravenously. And now you can see that the cells collected there at, the, at that site of surgery. And now here's an animal that had a heart attack. It was an induced heart attack. Um, he didn't smoke or drink, um, and they, but they clamp an artery and uh, give him a heart attack, and you can see there a lot, there's a bigger accumulation of cells there at that highly inflamed area. So these cells tend to go and hang out. They circulate throughout the whole body, but they will glom on to areas that have a lot of inflammation, something wrong with them, because that's, that's what they're there to do. So this might be depressing for some of you. I know it's depressing for me. This is, uh, this is the MSCs in your bone marrow as, uh, with age. So we actually lose 90% of our MSCs from our bone marrow in the maturation process. So the, the first graph is one in 10,000 of your bone marrow cells is an MSC. That's when you're newborn. When you're a teenager, 90% of them are gone. Well, most of them have migrated and they're supporting the rest of your body because we go from a seven pound baby to whatever. And uh, they, so they distribute throughout the body. And then basically we have to live on that remaining 10% for the rest of our lives. And it, uh, it goes, goes down from there. So one, one thing I want to talk about is the difference in, because we use umbilical cord MSCs. The reason we do that because they're non-tumorigenic, they are very robust, they double, we can get routinely 50 doublings out of those cells. Um, they have a faster doubling time. So if you can imagine, if you're trying to get ahead of something, if you can make more faster, you're gonna get ahead of it faster. And so this was a study done in China, and they, this, this was on MSCs that were taken from uh, cartilage, and the, the the, this, nobody was injured in this. These, these were people that had died from other, from other causes. In the case of the fetuses, it was a, a congenital heart defect, and the adults were uh, from heart attacks. So the adult, the middle adult is, the mean age on that is around 35 years old, and the, the, the aged is 65, which I don't consider aged, but they did for the purposes. And so you can see the doubling time is basically in one day, 24 or 25 hours for the, the, the fetal MSCs will divide every day. And the adult, was, they divide about every two days and the, the older adults uh, more like two and a half days doubling time. So uh, just, I'm, I'm just prepping for the next slide, but doubling is not what you think. So if I say 25 doublings and 50 doublings, 50 is not twice as many as 25, okay? It's logarithmic, so as you get these doublings increase and this number gets, I, we couldn't do it on one slide because it, it was too tall. So this is the difference in cell number 
uh, from 50, if you start from one cell and it, you divide it 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, and you keep doubling, you double it 25 times, that's how many cells you have, and this is 50 doublings on the top. You can barely see the, uh, the 25 doublings, it's barely going in there. So it's a very a logarithmic thing. So it's very important to have cells that can double a lot of times. The more they can double, the more work they can do, the more, the more uh, trophic factors they can secrete, the more immunomodulatory things they can secrete. And as we age, that unfortunately decreases. So this was, uh, I just wanted to quote this article because they did a very good job of reviewing the literature on aging cells. And basically their conclusion was that human MSCs from bone marrow aspiration, they decline with age and there's an age-related decline in the overall bone marrow MSC fitness, which might lead to problems when using autologous-based MSCs. And I love that word uh, because, you know, our fitness tends to decline with age. You know, when you're 60, it's not what it was when you were 20, and, uh, and that same kind of uh, holds true for your cells as well. The, the, the fitness of the MSC declines with age.